you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. I'm going to do some work on my truck and I'm going to document it for my other channel. But I wanted to talk about it briefly with you and show you what I'm doing. First of all, it's 76 out and it's kind of cloudy and rainy and it's going to get cooler over the next couple days. We're going to be down into the upper 60s, but still very nice overall. Got a little bit of rain spitting here and there, but no big deal. So what am I doing on my truck? I'm working on this baby today, my fan clutch. And basically what's going on there is whenever your engine's running, to save horsepower, they allow this fan to kind of slip. It doesn't get driven directly and what's going on inside is there's a little element on the front of this fan that based on the air temperature coming through the radiator the fan is allowed to slip like this because it's a viscous fluid that's inside silicone in this case and whenever it's at cooler temperature the fluid stays in the reservoir and allows the fan to be driven but at a very low speed compared to what the RPMs running off of the uh, shaft of the water pump. However, once that air temperature gets above 170 degrees, that little element or spring on the front closes a valve that's inside uh, of this thing here and that valve then allows through centrifugal force the rerouting of that fluid to allow the drive of the water pump shaft to drive this fan at a greater rate. So what happens is at cooler temperatures this fan slips and doesn't move as much air and saves horsepower on the engine. But whenever you get into warmer temperatures, again about a 170 degree air temperature, not engine running temperature but air temperature that the front of this is seeing, uh, at that point it starts to lock up the fan and make the fan move more air and pull more air. Now, in my case, I noticed that on this truck, that if I sit at an idle with my air conditioning on, the temperature climbs, and it climbs up over 200 degrees. It's about 210 degrees. Now, I know that that's acceptable, but I kind of go overboard with some of this stuff, and I want to make sure that I don't see that kind of temperature from my engine. So I'm going to change my fan clutch today to a severe duty one. And the reason I'm going to a severe duty is because this radiator that I have in here is a four core radiator. And the heavy duty fan clutch that's currently on there, not only is it old, but it doesn't lock up and move the kind of air that's needed for this four core. The fan blades are the same pitch for a severe duty and a heavy duty fan clutch so I don't have to change my fan. Now let me tell you about speed of vehicle and how it affects your cooling. That fan above 40 miles per hour if you could magically just reach inside your engine and throw it out the window as you drive down the highway you wouldn't need it at all because anything over 40 actually probably anything over 35 the air that is going through the front of the vehicle is enough to cool whatever's coming through the radiator from the engine, the hot coolant. It's being cooled at that kind of temperature, so you don't have to worry about a fan clutch issue if you're seeing heat issues as you drive down the highway at 50 miles an hour. If your vehicle's overheating, do not look at the fan clutch. That's not an issue. The fan does not do any work at that point. But if you have a problem with anything below 40 miles per hour where you come to a light and the vehicle starts to get hot and almost overheating, but once you get on the expressway, everything is okay, definitely look at your fan clutch. You could have an issue there. All right, guys, so you can see what this thing looks like apart. And uh, it's a little corroded. It's a little messy. It's not too bad, though. The fan looks pretty good. So if you got a 460, this is what it looks like for the most part. And if you got a 460 truck, the nice thing is compared to the 302s and the 351s and even the 49, you don't even have to take your radiator shroud off. Isn't that nice? So anyways, I'm getting there. I'm just waiting for UPS to deliver my overnight, but 
this is what the baby looks like. To show you that this thing is probably broken, what I did was I marked the centerpiece because that's the shaft that opens and closes the valve that's inside. And I've got an indication mark over here. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's lined up with the little wax line that I have on that shaft. So if I put a little heat to this, and I'm not putting a lot of heat, I'm not welding here, but I am using a torch. If I put a little heat, that should move position when I heat it up. Oh, here we go. Well, the wax is melting off of it, obviously. But you can see I've got some heat going on, and that metal is moving as far as it expanding but the valve is not changing position it's not turning at all and what happens is whenever this spring gets heated like this it changes its composition and it's supposed to turn that shaft that turns that valve well it's not doing it so here's the new one and you can see I got a line drawn on it and the shaft is right here I've got a mark on it and it's pointed to this line that's right here so we should see some movement of course you'll see the spring change size but you should see some movement too of that shaft in the center so we'll add some heat you can see the spring moving right away and then you can see that shaft changing see that that shaft is now pointing in a complete different direction that means it's operating that valve inside. Now that it's hot, we can do the exact opposite. I'll mark it here. That's the way it's pointed currently. And the marker's not wanting to work so well, but that's the way it's pointed currently. And now I'll add air to it to cool it down. So we'll see it move back. So there it's back to where it was. So obviously this one is going to make a difference compared to the old one and the old one is bad. So I'm gonna do this work today. Like I said, I gotta shoot a video for my other channel. And if you wanna see that installation video, I'll put the link down below or a card up above here. Um, I'll also put a link down below for you 460 guys. Well, actually this fan clutch covers quite a few vehicles. so. Um, click the link down below. It might cover your uh, GM or Dodge also. It's going to be a severe duty fan clutch. It's from Hayden. It's a really nice piece and it's not very expensive. I'm going to install it and again if you guys want to check out that video just uh, click the link below or in the card. I appreciate it guys and uh, sorry I don't have much more news for you yet. Heidi and I is going to continue with this stripe job whenever the rain stops and she gets some time off. Uh, because she don't want me doing it because I'm colorblind and who knows what I would come up with there. So as always guys, I hope to see you out there. Thanks and bye.